first, I'd like to book you in a small lounge in Vegas for the experience. Then the area talk shows, you know, Tom Snyder, Mike Douglas, all leading to Carson. Then if he asks you to come back, I think he will. That should do it. So, you keep motor mouth here in line when I work on them droolers at the network. You're a good kid, Corky. Hey, you know what I think? Now, what do you think? We're going to be a star. That's a creepy opening scene from Magic, a frightening thriller with Anthony Hopkins as a ventriloquist with a split personality. I think it's one of the best movies of the year. Magic is one of five new films we'll be reviewing on Sneak Previews, two film critics talking about and sometimes arguing about new movies in town. This is Roger Ebert, the Pulitzer Prize winning film critic of the Chicago Sun-Times. And across the aisle from me is Gene Siskel, film critic of the Chicago Tribune and CBS TV News in Chicago. And I might add, Gene, that you and I seem to be in total disagreement about most of the movies on tonight's show. Doesn't bother me. Okay. In addition to Magic, which I didn't like nearly as much as you did. The last picture that really scared me was The Exorcist. Before that, Rosemary's Baby. Well, there's a new movie named Magic, just as good as those two thrillers. It's the exciting story of a schizophrenic magician who uses ventriloquism in his act, and his dummy is the stronger part of his split personality. Anthony Hopkins plays the ventriloquist magician. After he hits it big in New York City, he becomes frightened by his success. He runs away to a resort in the woods owned by a woman he had a crush on in high school. Anne Margaret plays that woman. She's unhappily married now, and she's excited to see Hopkins and his wise guy dummy. Oh, oh my God, you brought that. You thought Peg didn't remember. Ah. You knew who I was, too? Yeah. Well, why didn't you two at least grunt at each other? <laughs> He's just as cute as he is on the tube. Cute? Farrell, yes. Sexy, yes. Ronald Reagan is cute. Oh, please, could I hold him just so I'll be careful? <laughs> Oh, he's heavy. Husky, a bimbo. His lips didn't move. That's because you're not stroking my levers, sweetheart. Oh. Right in there. Oh, she ghosted me. <laughs> Ignore him. Go right ahead. Okay. There. Oh. Oh. Right there. Uh, oh. Oh. All seems very happy there, except that Corky, Anthony Hopkins, has run away from New York to see Anne Margaret without telling his agent, Burgess Meredith. Meredith eventually tracks Corky down. He realizes his client is a very sick man, afraid of success, and totally dependent on his dummy for strength. Nothing funny. Not anymore. What are you going to do? Going to make a few phone calls. Tell people you mean? Corky, you ain't in control. You owe me a listen, don't you think? Yeah, I was kind of out of control back in the city. I, uh, I could feel myself starting to slip down the iceberg. So you took off? And now you're fine? Sure, on account of Ted. The local town pump, terrific knockers. Look, Fats, please. Come on, will you? Sorry. Um, I've known her ever since high school. I never figured I'd have a chance with her, but uh, now everything's changed. She believes in me. Listen, girls are for down the line, kid. Right now, you, you gotta let me help you. I know a lot of people. Beautiful doctors. He means head shrinkers. He just thinks they're a fruitcake. He doesn't. He never said that. He's on our side. He's the film. Don't forget that. Never forget that. Hey, kid. I'm going to ask you to do something. It's, it's a little something anybody ought to be able to do. Now, if you can do it, fine. We'll forget this whole thing. But if you can't, 
We'll think about getting you to see somebody fast. Is it a deal? Name it. Make Fat shut up for five minutes. Five minutes? I can make him shut up for five years. Just great. That five-minute test turns out to be the longest five minutes in this guy's life as the film really moves into high gear. Obviously, Corky and Fats can't let the word get out that Corky's a nutcase. So Magic becomes a murderous, R-rated thriller as Corky tries to save himself, even half of himself. Anthony Hopkins is brilliant in his role of Corky. How tough it must have been to act with a 16-pound dummy on his arm. So, good thrills, the rough world of show business, a touching love story, that's all in Magic for my money. One of the year's best movies. Well, not for my money, Gene. I kind of like the premise during the first hour as they set it up. This guy is schizophrenic, his dummy is the other half of his personality. But then the second hour just works that out. There aren't any surprises. I think there should have been some kind of a twist, maybe something supernatural. Roger, as long as the two of them are on camera and I can see that I can almost feel like the blood flowing between this guy and his dummy and his arm, if this guy can make a piece of wood come alive, I can't help well, but watch the picture. I have to agree with you, but that I think uh, the credit there goes to Anthony Hopkins. Mm -hmm. It's a great performance. Richard Attenborough does a good job of directing the picture. Mm -hmm. I like Burgess Meredith. Mm -hmm. I thought the, the general level of the picture was so high mm -hmm. that the last half hour just let me down. I wanted something more to happen. I don't think the screenplay does justice to the talent of the people who We're made getting the movie. pictures that uh, we like, but then they dribble off at the end. Well, that's an example with the next picture, I think, mm -hmm. which is good until, until, the, until the end. Mm -hmm. We also split on Magic, the thriller starring Anthony Hopkins as a psychotic magician. Gene thought it was one of the best thrillers of recent years and gives it a yes. I thought it was all too predictable. 